What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex you and you're watching The Road to Tia 5. This is just a web series where we talk about Transformers 5, this episode number 15. And before I begin this episode, let's start off with a couple of birthday shoutouts. And the first birthday goes to Jacob Curtis. Happy belated birthday. And also on Friday the 13th, the celebration for Stephen Pryor's 26th birthday is happening. So happy birthday to both y'all, and I hope you guys have a good one. All right, awesome. So moving on, what we're going to talk about is, of course, Transformers 5. And yes, it is happening. In the previous episode, we mentioned that uh, Hasbro CEO Brian Goldner mentioned at Toy Fair 2015 that Transformers 5 has been greenlit. Pre-production has started, and pre-production isn't a whole lot of anything to get excited about, except for the fact that it's happening. But other than that... There's not a whole lot of hands-on stuff that's going on. You won't physically see anything actually happening. It's just pre-production, which means a lot of logistical stuff. It's a lot of administrative stuff, as well as handling the business side of things. Uh, but uh, not a whole lot going on. But... <laughs> I just wanted to share this with you. Now, it's not anything that's really exciting or important. And these articles come about all the time. Okay, came across this article from uh, ChristianToday.com. And in the entertainment section, it has a headline that reads, Transformers 5 cast plot news, release date pushed to 2017. Something like this doesn't excite me because I've seen these types of articles before. This is what I call a, a rumor article. Okay, it's just full, filled with rumors. There's no actual solid information here. As a matter of fact, I mean, it, they don't even state where their rumors came from. I mean, if you look at the entire, article, the entire article, it doesn't actually state where the rumors came from. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if the, the, the writer actually got the rumors from me. <laughs> or at least uh, the mention of Jonathan Liebesman. Who ever mentioned Jonathan Liebesman as the director? This is the first time I've ever seen it on print, okay, on a website. But the first time I've ever thought of uh, any other director other than Michael Bay working on Transformers film uh, being Jonathan Liebesman was when I mentioned it. So it's possible that this website got the information from me. And I wasn't here to spread a rumor. I was just suggesting that if Michael Bay is not going to direct it, the second director in line would be Jonathan Liebesman. All right. Anyways, that's what they're here to talk about. And uh, let's just see what it says. According to the rumors, Transformers 5 has been pushed to 2017, which fans ha may have to wait a little bit longer to see if the fifth installment. Michael Bay will no longer be around to direct, and the reins have now been passed to a new director. Is that entirely true? I mean, about the whole the reins being passed to another director. I mean, once Michael Bay is done his Benghazi drama, he could still very well work on Transformers 5. But, like I said, if, if anyone was to take the reins, it'd be Jonathan Liebesman. Because, honestly speaking... Other than some brand new young director, what director would really want to work on, you know, like, what Michael Bay left for them? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but as for the 2017 release date, we knew about this, okay? Some didn't believe it was coming in 2017, but we knew that 2017 was going to be the year that it was going to be released. It's impossible for them to release a movie of this size in 2016 considering they've started with nothing they have nothing right now they should have been they should already be prepping to film two months from now okay in may okay or april even okay they have nothing they don't even have actors they don't have writer let's move around let's move along in this article this time around it will be jonathan Liebesman in the director's chair he's the same one behind the recently rebooted teenage mutant ninja turtles which ironically starred megan fox though tmnt wasn't a bad film it remains to be seen if he can weave the same magic for the Transformers sequel Mark Wahlberg will be back having signed up to do a few more Transformers movies while up in the air right now is whether the two former stars would be joining Wahlberg. Uh, that would be uh, Megan Fox and Shia LaBeouf. Uh, uh, Fox had her issues with Bay, which many speculated as the reasons behind her departure while Shia LaBeouf wasn't around during Transformers 4. Uh, but they're both welcome to they're both welcome to the idea of returning for their roles okay um like i said before in previous videos i don't believe they're coming back i don't want them to come back uh, mark Wahlberg most likely is going to come back m because uh he signed a contract okay he signed on for that and and of course he wouldn't say no to that i mean in 
Transformers Age of Extinction is his highest grossing film ever. Okay, why would you say no to that? Okay, that's just silly. <laughs> From a business standpoint, all right, that's just silly. Okay, <laughs> and now it talks about a l some stuff that I found a little bit far fetched, and that is. Uh, there are other celebrities who could possibly appear as well. That would include uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Bruce Willis. I don't have, I have no idea where they got that from. But according to Fashion and Style, it says that um, there was some rumors suggesting that Bruce Willis or The Rock would be uh, starring in Transformers Five. I think that's a little bit out there. I mean, if anything, they'll just take one big actor, uh, but not two big actors. Um, you know, stars, two big Hollywood superstars. In the same movie. Okay, I, I just don't see that happening at all. Now, here's another thing. Finally, the Autobots and Decepticons could be adding new members to the fold, according to comic book movie. Potential additions are Ultra Magnus, Override, Red Alert, Scourge, and Blitzwing. Where are they getting all this information? Like I said, where is the source of inf uh, where's the source of these rumors? Where's the source of this information? <laughs> I think one of the things too important, uh, the, the one of the important things to 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 um. To, to, to really, really understand is that uh, they're working with nothing right now. When they work on the script of these movies, they don't actually focus on which characters they're going to have. They just focus on Decepticon 1, Decepticon 2, Decepticon 3, Decepticon 4. And then they slap on the names afterwards. Okay? <laughs> That's just the process behind how these movies are made. Okay? And so, like I said, I'm not excited about anything that this this article has to, to mention because all of it is just speculation and rumors okay and rumors which um, have have uh, no no real solid uh, uh, evidence of even existing in the first place I mean could they could have made all this up or or they could have just wrote this inspired by my videos <laughs> anyways uh, so that's that's the latest um, that's the latest I guess a uh, piece of information where they actually mentioned Jonathan Liebesman's name on a website okay as a possible director now this website mentioned that he he most likely is taking the reins uh, after Michael Bay and that Michael Bay is not coming back but um, who knows anyways um, so that's all I really got to talk about but um, you know what I actually want to respond to a tweet I was tweeted to by Kenneth Wright. Okay, he's one of my Twitter followers. Follow me on Twitter at Ragin Nation. Um, and um, and what he mentioned is that, or rather, he asked me this question, and that is, uh, where is it? Okay. Hey Alex, I have a question. Why does everybody blame Bay for the TF movies when he is the director and not the writer? Very good question. Okay, I mean it's very easy to blame Michael Bay because, uh, you know, his name is everywhere. I mean, you see his face everywhere. You see his name plastered all over the place. Um, but you know, some people still blame Aaron Kruger uh, just because he was the writer, and there is some uh, pretty poor writing in the movies. Uh, but but very good question. Why do people blame Michael Bay? All right. Well, uh, there's you know two reasons for that, and one of the reasons I've already mentioned, and that is because you know he's the director. Essentially, he's he's the one who's responsible for an entire movie. Okay. I'm, I mean, you know, of course, other people were involved, but creatively, it was his vision. So that's one of the reasons. Now, the other reason uh, why why people would blame Michael Bay is because here's a very interesting thing about uh, the way Michael Bay makes movies. Okay. And that is, he writes action. He writes action to the finest, minute detail. He's an action director. Okay, when a, a direct, when a writer like Aaron Kruger writes a movie, uh, um, you know, like for example, the script for Transformers: uh, Age of Extinction, what he does is, the, at the very earliest process, is that first of all, you know, the studios hire him back, and then. Uh, they say, okay, give us something, give us something bigger, okay? So he will come up with something, and then he'll have, it, like, a pitch. Like, just just a very, very simple pitch, okay? And that is, they have, the, the Autobots goal is this, and that is they have to get to from point A to point B, okay? Then they start filling in the details, okay? But he doesn't actually write the action. He will just say that, okay, they end up in lockdown ship, and then he has to rescue Tesca, Tessa, and then this is what happens, okay? Michael Bay is the one to fill in the blanks of in those action spots, 
Okay, Michael Bay is the one that says that I need an explosion here. I need an explosion here. I need Mark Wahlberg to run through here, 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 here. You know, I need you know this shot here. I need the camera to be shaky over here. You know, the direct the Aaron Kruger doesn't write all that. Okay, it's Michael Bay who's responsible for a lot of what you would refer to the vision. This is his vision essentially. Okay, and he comes up up with a lot of stuff on the spot. Okay. In fact, a lot of the stuff that Aaron Kruger wrote, you know, probably didn't even make it in. I'm sure it made most of it in, but some of the stuff was probably Michael Bay just wanting to change things up on the spot, okay? Because that's happened before, okay? In Bad Boys, they didn't even have a, a, a lot of the script. Martin Lawrence and Will Smith were just able to ad-lib a lot of the stuff, okay? Because they just didn't have... A complete script and Michael Bay allowed that to happen he just wanted to see them go off and he's actually allowed that to happen even in uh, other Transformers films because Shia LaBeouf is actually pretty quick with his wit and able to come up with stuff and he just lets that fly okay he also includes a lot of stuff that he just feels like having in there for example Devastator's balls okay the wrecking balls that wasn't originally in the script but he decided that hey you know what that's funny let's just add that in Another thing is that, um, you know, his goofball friend, um, I forgot his name, uh, but uh, Shia LaBeouf's goofball friend, uh, he climbs a tree. That wasn't in the script. He, he just said that, you know, let's just have him climb the tree. I mean, that would, that would be funny, okay? All these little things. Maybe even the donut scene was his idea. Um, as for writing the action, the, the, the whole idea of, of the whole tilting building scene in the driller sequence... That was something that he came up with, like, just, um, you know, he was just, uh, he was, he even mentioned in an interview, he was doing sc stomach crunches on it, on a decline bench, and then he thought that, wouldn't it be a great idea to have our heroes running in a, in a building that's actually slowly collapsing? So you see where I'm going with this, and you can understand why a lot of the fans blame Michael Bay for, for, for the movie, as opposed to Aaron Kruger. Now, I also blame Aaron Kruger for some of the stuff because I think that a lot of the, 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 the script, like the dialogue, is just really, really juvenile. I find that, that it's very unrealistic. I mean, who talks like that? <laughs> I mean, seriously, who really talks like that? Who goes to a job interview like that? You know what I'm saying? So, you know what? In a way, you know, they both have to take the responsibility if people are disappointed in it. And uh, if people want to blame someone, they have to take, they both have to take the responsibility. But I put it more on Aaron Kruger because I really am not a big fan of his, his uh, you know, his writing. I'm, I'm, I just am not. But as for Michael Bay, you know, I know what to expect when I watch his movies. I'm a fan of his films and, um, you know, I know which ones are good, which ones are not good, Okay. I think The Rock is his best film. Okay, there was some really good writing uh, from from John Hen Jonathan Hensley. But anyways, uh, um, as for the action, I expected it to be like this. I expected it to be incohesive, which it is. Okay, um, but that's just the way he likes his movies. That's his vision. So you know what? It, to answer your question, I you know I really hope that answers your question. But uh, that's how it works with Michael Bay. Uh, he he writes. Act, uh, he writes a story around the action, okay, as opposed to your traditional filmmaker who writes a story first and then they put action as a supplement to tell the story. Michael Bay is the complete opposite. He has all the action really detailed in his head and then he says that how can we write the characters around this action? So, you know, it's quite a contrast, but this is the way the man works. Okay. At the end of the day, he's a storyteller, but he's a very visual storyteller, which is a very you know different style of storytelling. You either like it or you don't. Okay. But anyways, thanks a lot, Kenneth, for uh, sending me this question. Thanks for your tweet, and of course, following me on Twitter. Um, I really appreciate it. It, it generates a lot of um, you know very interesting discussion. But that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, I want to interact with you guys, and that's why I make these videos. Uh, but anyways, that's that's all I got to say in this video. This is all I have to tell you about uh, Transformers Five. You know, it's all rumors, pre-production, not a whole lot of exciting stuff. But that's what it's all about when we're this early in the phase. Okay, I mean the movie doesn't come out until 2017, so typically nothing solid really happens until summer of this year that's when we're going to start getting the announcements but you know what 
Time goes by fast, okay? Once April and May rolls around, we're going to start getting big movies. It's going to make the, the summer go along pretty quickly, all right? Anyways, that's all I got to say in this video. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter, at Rage Nation. My name is Alex, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. Uh, you know, location scouting, you know, testing out scenes, sequences, you know, uh, looking at cars, um, you know, all kinds of things.